Hello, everyone. Welcome to the China Brief. We bring you the latest global media coverage on China's current affairs, economy, and society, as well as exclusive analysis. Our trustworthy, professional, and multi-perspective China reporting provides judgment and decision-making references for the world's elites. The China Brief is issued in multiple languages, including text, video, podcasts, and books, and is broadcasted 24/7 in the six-degree world. Welcome to this edition of China Briefing. In China Briefing, we bring you the latest news on China's politics, economy, and society from the global media, as well as exclusive expert analysis. If you find our content helpful, please subscribe to our newsletter. China's 9/12 program uses social media to target dissidents. Bloomberg reports that China has been using fake social media accounts to harass critics outside its borders. According to a complaint and affidavit filed by the U.S. Department of Justice, the Special Project 912 Working Group uses fake accounts on Twitter, Facebook, and Google's YouTube to support narratives favorable to China's Communist Party, undercut regime critics who have fled abroad, and intimidate foreign enemies of the state. One of the group's targets is Guo Wenghui, who has been critical of the Chinese government. The United States has charged 34 members of the Ministry of Public Security. China's foreign ministry has denied the allegations but did not respond to requests for comment from its police. This is China Briefing. U.S.-China relations enter new era of terror. The Financial Times reports that U.S. Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen has released a three-point plan to promote constructive engagement between the U.S. and Chinese economies. The plan aims to ensure fair competition and cooperation in addressing pressing global challenges. Meanwhile, European Commission President Ursula von der Leyen is seeking to de-risk China-EU relations. Including through the use of strategic investment and long-term trade initiatives. Here is the China briefing. China is preparing for war with the West. The Daily Telegraph reports that the British government's attitude toward China is both ambivalent and weak, writes columnist Matthew Henderson in the Daily Telegraph. He argues that Britain's reliance on China as an important economic partner is dangerous given its current geopolitical and human rights policies, military buildup, and disturbing lack of transparency on issues such as COVID-19. The Chinese Communist Party is engaged in asymmetric warfare with the United States and other Western nations while developing weapons for potential confrontation. Henderson notes that the CCP clearly views the West as the enemy. Therefore, given China's dubious record, Britain should reassess whether it is right to engage with China on humanity's greatest problems. Here is the China briefing. Joe Biden's high-stakes election gamble. The Financial Times reports that President Joe Biden's decision to seek re-election in 2024 is a major risk for the Democratic Party, the United States, and the wider world. Biden is currently 80 years old and looks and sounds his age. His Republican opponent is likely to be Donald Trump, who has proven himself unfit for public office and remains popular among much of the U.S. population. Nonetheless, Biden may believe he is uniquely qualified to beat Trump, as he has done before. Polls show he would again narrowly defeat Trump, but he would lose to almost any other Republican challenger. Biden's middle-class background and his commitment to reindustrializing America may help him appeal to swing voters, while his domestic and foreign policy records provide the public with commendable accomplishments. However, given Biden's age, his potentially deteriorating health or diminished mental capacity could become an issue. In addition, Vice President Kamala Harris's failure to convince voters that she is ready to take over the presidency puts Biden in a tricky position in choosing a running mate. This is China briefing. Coin U.S. abandons proposed one billion dollar deal for Voyager assets. The Financial Times reports that Coin U.S. has abandoned its acquisition of the assets of bankrupt crypto lender Voyager Digital. The move comes after the Securities and Exchange Commission (CFTC) objected to the deal, 
a decision Voyager called disappointing, but added that its Chapter 11 reorganization plan allowed for the assets to be distributed directly to customers. The collapse of the deal marks another setback for the crypto industry as it tries to establish itself in the United States. Here's the China briefing. Meta's Clegg invokes anti-China rhetoric to slam TikTok. Bloomberg reports that Meta Platform's head of global affairs Nick Clegg is once again stoking anti-China rhetoric against rival TikTok's lack of democratic values as U.S. lawmakers and rival companies speak out against the Chinese ByteHop-owned app. Clegg said his company, as well as others, has been restricted from trading in China, where social media platforms are allowed to operate in the United States almost unrestrictedly. France is also showing signs of being less pro-TikTok, while India has banned the Chinese app TikTok says it is quarantining sensitive U.S. data operations. Here's the China briefing. Republican senators urge Biden to sanction Chinese cloud companies. Reuters reports that nine Republican senators sent a letter to the Biden administration asking for sanctions against Huawei Cloud and Ali Cloud, citing national security concerns. The group, led by Republican Senator Bill Haggerty, said some Chinese cloud computing companies are increasingly engaging with foreign entities, in some cases sanctioned foreign entities, in direct challenges to the national security and economic security interests of the United States and our allies and partners. It also called on the U.S. Departments of Commerce, State and Treasury to add Aliyun to the Commerce Department's export control list. Neither company responded to the letter. Here's the China briefing. Russia wants companies other than Gazprom to supply gas to China. Reuters reports that Russian energy officials have announced plans to explore other avenues for exporting natural gas to China in a bid to find new partners beyond Russia's state-owned Gazprom. The plans mean China has a chance to make tough bargains as additional gas supplies are not expected to be needed until after 2030, and Russia is seeking new pipelines with an annual capacity of 50 billion cubic meters of gas as a way to make up for lost exports to Europe. Both Rosneft and Irkutsk oil are reportedly possible sources for the route. This is China Briefing. Huawei discards expensive precision maps in self-driving cars. Nikkei Asia reports that Huawei and other Chinese self-driving car companies are exploring alternative technologies to high-definition maps, which are too expensive to create because the precision needed for self-driving cars requires more comprehensive road coverage. Huawei executive Yu Qingdong said that despite collecting data in Shanghai for a year or two, the company has not yet managed to cover all 9,000 kilometers of the city's roads. Here's the China briefing. China increases rare earth production to meet demand for electric cars, wind power. Nikkei Asia reports that Chinese state-owned companies are increasing production of rare earth metals in response to government quotas. The move aims to meet growing demand for high-tech products and electric vehicles by creating a supply chain capable of delivering the minerals. China North Rare Earths Group, Hitech is expanding its refining and processing facilities in Inner Mongolia at a cost of $1.1 billion, making it one of the world's largest refineries. Here's the China briefing. Pacific Island countries concerned as U.S. Congress debates budget. The South China Morning Post reports that experts say the Pacific is waiting to see if the U.S. will make good on its promise to increase funding as Congress debates reducing foreign aid. The Pacific Partnership Strategy announced in September commits the U.S. to spend more than $800 million on climate change, fisheries disputes and maritime security. The bulk of the funding is for increased assistance for the renewal of the South Pacific Tuna Treaty, with an increased contribution of $60 million per year for the next decade. The treaty promotes economic development of fisheries and outlines rules governing the activities of U.S. vessels in the Pacific Island Economic Zone. The treaty allows for increased U.S. surveillance at sea and provides an economic lifeline for certain signatory nations that earn 40% of their national income through tuna fishing licenses and access fees. 
Here's the China briefing. NetEase fights former Blizzard Entertainment Partners lawsuit in Shanghai. NetEase, China's second largest video game company, is suing Blizzard Entertainment, creator of World of Warcraft, for 300 million yen, $45 million, after a 14 year business partnership between the two ended on the mainland in January, the South China Morning Post reported. NetEase affiliate Shanghai eNet Technology Company accused U.S. game publisher Blizzard of suspending services for popular games such as Overwatch, Hearthstone Legend, StarCraft, and Diablo III in mainland China year. The requested fees include refunds to local players, unsold merchandise and payments for certain undeveloped games. Blizzard denies that it violated its licensing agreement. This is China Briefing. Will South Korea export military forces to Ukraine? Foreign policy reports that South Korean President Yoon Suk-yeol has said his country could provide direct military support to Ukraine if Russian forces attack civilians or carry out massacres as Ukraine becomes more involved in U.S.-backed global defense. The shift could give the United States and its allies access to South Korea's vast military stockpile and ease pressure on NATO's own limited supply. However, it has the potential to increase tensions with China and Russia. The possible change was prompted by a meeting between Yun and U.S. President Joe Biden, in which Yun confirmed that Seoul would consider providing assistance beyond humanitarian and financial support. While China and Russia have warned that deepening ties with the United States and other allies could lead to retaliation, Yun has faced criticism at home from South Korean opposition leaders over any potential state-to-state -state arms deal in support of Ukraine. This is China Briefing. Is Russian-Chinese cooperation harming India's national interests? Diplomat reports that Michael Thim in The Diplomat notes that Russia's deepening partnership with China does not harm India's core interests, adding that Russia is not helping China harm India in any way. However, Thim noted that Russia actually harms the national interests of both countries by selling weapons to India and China. Thim also stressed that China is seen as a more important customer for Russian weapons than India. Currently, the JF-17 fighter jet, jointly developed by China and Pakistan, uses Russian engines and is used in attacks on Indian territory in 2019. Thim argues that India's ambiguous diplomatic response has created more awkward moments for New Delhi than practical benefits. India joined the Shanghai Cooperation Organization, SCO, co-led by China and Russia, in 2017, but Pakistan was admitted to the body at the same time. Membership in the SCO involves, at least declaratory, counterterrorism cooperation and joint military exercises, but India is threatened primarily by terrorism from Pakistan and Chinese armed forces. Thim added that despite the potential for backdoor diplomacy, India's silent pressure never materialized or worked effectively. Russia's expanding cooperation with China has strengthened India's other rival, Pakistan, which is no longer a country with which Russia has no security cooperation. Moreover, Moscow's enthusiasm for Islamabad and China's support have only reinforced India's belief that it can no longer rely on Russia for security and must explore other options. Here is the China briefing. Top Ukrainian advisor slams Emmanuel Macron's peace deal plan. A senior advisor to Volodymyr Zelensky says Emmanuel Macron has been told he is prepared to abandon Bordeaux if he wants to negotiate on behalf of Ukraine the UK Daily Telegraph reports. Zelensky's national security adviser, Alexei Danilov, called on Macron to stop his attempts to draft the terms of a peace deal with the help of China. The strategy was developed without the prior knowledge of the wartime Kiev government in Ukraine. The call to abandon Bordeaux was made in response to Macron's possible negotiation of lands such as Crimea behind the backs of the Ukrainian people. Xi Jinping, the most powerful man in the world and his subordinates is a comprehensive analysis of Xi's power structure, providing insight into his consolidation of control over China's Communist Party, military and economy, 
and exploring the systemic changes he has implemented. The book details the personnel layout of the Political Bureau and the Central Secretariat of the Communist Party of China, focusing on the 26 individuals in the most powerful and important positions in China, giving readers a clear picture of the future direction of top-level politics in China. The book is available on Amazon in Kindle ebook and paperback formats, as well as in multiple languages. The link to purchase the book is here https colon slash slash amzn dot to slash 3 zqrcda Stay up to date on the latest China-related news, analysis and policy briefs from around the world with China Briefing. Our team aggregates, synthesizes and summarizes the most important information from a variety of sources, including the media, think tanks, government agencies and industry experts. Our mission is to provide you with easily accessible and vital information that is tailored to your specific area of interest. We understand the importance of staying abreast of the latest developments related to China and are committed to making this information accessible to our readers. Join the conversation and stay informed about the latest news and developments related to China by visiting our website at https colon slash slash six world.